It is Tuesday, November 30th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. And now, a guy he he claims he'll never again put on a cat suit and jump from the lights. Never. J.P. Shedrick. <laughs> I promise. Uh, welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on this Tuesday afternoon. My name's J.P. Shadrick. We've got a busy couple hours ahead. We'll start off here on Jaguars Happy Hour with Jaguars analyst Jeff Logman here in a few moments. We'll recap week 12, Falcons 21, Jaguars 14. We'll look ahead to the next week. That's week 13 on the schedule. The Jags and the L.A. Rams coming up at SoFi Stadium. And then the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network at 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, head coach. Head coach Urban Meyer will join us, easy for me to say, and we will ask him about his name being rumored to some of these college coaching openings. Yes, we will. We'll see what he says. That's at 5 o'clock today on the network. Of course, the Jaguars lost to the Falcons last week to fall to 2-9. and nine. Falcons 21, Jaguars 14. Jags got to an early 14-0 deficit. It was 21-3 after the opening Falcons drive of the second half. Jags called act, called clawed back in the game within seven and had the ball with a couple minutes left but fell short. There were key special teams penalties. They were offside on a punt, leverage on a field goal, deflating for the defense. They had to come back uh, out on the field immediately a couple times. Urban Meyer Monday still working on finding what this offense is going to be. A lot of positives. Third downs was really good. I thought Trevor, someone asked me how Trevor played. I thought he competed his tail off, and I thought, uh, you know, third downs were excellent. We did a lot of tempo on third downs. We got 18 snaps of, uh, you know, a little bit more what he's used to doing, going fast. And uh, the offense line did a nice job in those situations. We got first downs. So that was a part of it. Execution's part of it, but uh, I'm really pleased with that. That's why you sustain those long drives. We had a couple really long drives, too. Like two 14 play drives, if I remember. That's head coach Urban Meyer Monday, and we welcome in Jaguars analyst Jeff Logaman now. Good afternoon to you, Logs. Good afternoon, what JP. Uh, what did you think of the offense in general last week? All the, you know, the buzzword last week was creativity. How much creativity did you see? Well, I, I think the, the big change was they started to run a little bit more run, run pass option stuff. And uh, do I think that that's highly creative. I think it's different, and I think anything that you can do that's different sometimes to generate a little bit of rhythm is a good thing. My thoughts overall, in summary, is that you scored 14 points. Yes. Uh, That's not good enough. No. And until you can start to score enough points to be competitive, then it's not good enough. And so you have to just keep working. I mean, there's no other way to do it but then to – find more ways or more creative ways to utilize your personnel, to find better personnel, to discover personnel, to get the current personnel to play better. I mean, that's the only things you can do. But the one thing that I can tell you, JP, is that Mm -hmm. this football team needs to correct some controllable things in order for uh, for them to give themselves a chance, plain and simple. And like, that's for example, offense, defense, and special teams. I got a list. Oh, boy. We've got two hours. I got a list. Might take that I long. I got a list, okay? Yes. And, and here's things that are controllable. Okay, you had a, an illegal formation on the interception yes. with Marvin Jones. And, I, and yeah. I don't care if the quarterback says that I, I wasn't sure if it was a free play or not. It certainly impacts your thinking, thinking that it, maybe it could be. Mm-hmm. And I thought that Trevor threw it up. Yeah, he said after the game that he did not. They were going to throw that anyway. He said he wasn't sure, but then they were going to throw it anyway, and and that's what he said. Regardless, two things happened there. One, either, first of all, you got a a 10-year wide receiver that is lined up improperly covering up a tight end. That's not hard to figure out. I mean, that when you look down towards the ball as a wide receiver, you should see that there's a tight end, and he's lined up on the line of scrimmage, so I need to be off. That's that's. Fundamental football. Can't have a mistake there. What happens if you threw a touchdown there? Oh, it wouldn't have been a touchdown. Exactly. Yeah. It gets called back. That's right. And on a, 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 a very easily controlled play that could have been prevented so that it wouldn't have been a penalty, okay? Mm-hmm. That's one. 
uh, Laurenta McRae, all sides. Oh, bad. On a, on a fourth and three on your punt return when the center raises his head. That's what they do. The center on the long snapper will raise his head up all the time. They will do things to try to get you off sides when it's less than five yards. That's awareness. Hold your water. That's And Laurenta is a veteran now. Yeah. I mean, this is not a Seventh rookie. Year. Yeah, this is not a rookie mistake. There's no excuse for that. Uh, Roy Robertson Harris, what, leveraging leverage. Yeah, you 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 can't commit a leverage. I mean, that's that's again that goes back to fundamental football, and that you know that that's a penalty. You can't do that. Uh, second and goal, when the Jaguars were driving, and you have what appeared to be Jawan Taylor standing up and looking back towards the quarterback. And, and at first people thought he was the only one that was not moving and then allows the pressure. And Trevor has to throw it incomplete to Ogunbowale. Yes. Uh, and, and what Ogunbowale was doing on the field at that time, I mean, you can argue that a little bit because James Robinson certainly deserved to be on the field when you get to that critical juncture of the field. But that's not on Jawan. That's on the offense as a whole because, and I think, but I'm not positive, but it appeared that they were going on first sound. Okay, first sound is a quarterback gets up and he's looking around and he says, ready. And then as soon as he says that, the ball snapped. Well, he's trying to, what appears to be, change the play. And so he's like, easy. So you, you kind of do something without saying something sudden because mm. you don't want the ball to be snapped. Well, Linder snapped it. And... Everybody kind of was delayed starting because they all uh-huh. heard or saw Trevor, but Linder didn't. So is that Linder's fault? Is that Trevor's fault? I mean, that's an organizational thing that should be corrected, okay, and then should not happen it's at on, this stage it, of the game. It's on your list. Uh, you got the, uh, the the play towards the end of the half to where all you need is about five yards to get an opportunity at a, at a you know, 50, 51, 52-yard field goal, mm-hmm. and Ben Barch gets beat. Uh, in a quick fashion by um, uh, Grady Jarrett, yeah. who's a really good football player. and But the routes, the quarterback doesn't have any options because all the routes are 15 yards or more with the exception of a dump off and then a crossing tight end. But the crossing tight end doesn't even get his head back around until late. I mean, you got to have a better play call than that because, I mean, in, in that situation, you're trying to get five or six yards and maybe have a quick catch and then – a short gain, line up and kick a field goal. You don't need 15 or 20 yards. Yeah, just run something. You got 10 seconds left on the clock before the half. Uh, kind of a qu- questionable play call there. And then uh, this list is getting long, by the way. Well, I mean, but I'm saying that these are all I controllable know. things, right? Right. right. Okay, that's that's, the whole point. that's five things that I've listed so far. Mm-hmm. You could go back and say Cam on the false start early in the ball game. That would actually be six. Okay. Okay. First and goal at the six. Juwan Taylor gets a hold. Okay, the very next play, he gives up a pressure. On the, on the hold, pull your arm out of there and belly flop him. Okay, and then you don't get the penalty call. call. Seriously, pull your arm out. Have the arm across the chest. Okay, all you have to do is literally just do that and belly flop him. And, and that, you're holding your arm straight out to the side. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and that's Grady Jarrett again, by the way, who, again, I said is a good football player. Nevin Lawson has a hold on a third and two, puts his arms around the waist of a guy. And it wasted what was a really, I mean, a really good pass rush by Taven Bryant that would have got the Jaguars off the field sooner, given them more time to be able to have a, a drive. And then at the very end of the game, you had a miscommunication, very apparent, between quarterback and wide receiver LaVisca Chenault Jr. on a fourth and ten that LaVisca's running a 15-yard route and the ball was thrown for a 10-yard stick route. I mean, these are things that you you got to clean up. If you're going to give yourself a chance to win, you have to clean up these things. Let's hear from the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, about the offense, the efficiency that he actually felt at times, especially later in the game. Yeah, I thought we had some good uh, wrinkles today. Um, obviously, not the result we wanted. We wanted to come out with a win, but I think offensively we were, we were a lot more efficient. Number one thing is finishing drives. we got to – we got to score more touchdowns. Um, so I say that's the, that's the main thing. But I did think we took a step as far as um, productivity today. I thought we did a better job. Yeah, you know, and it's it's what it is. I mean, the the high water mark for points this year is twenty three, and it took a couple of fifty yard long ones in London to get to twenty three points in that game. 
So it has been a difficult stretch here for the offense to try to get much going consistently. But, you know, in a game where they were down 21-3, they found a way to go nine plays on a touchdown drive, uh, the, the Tavon Austin touchdown. They and and by for- the way, that drive right there, JP, had three plays in a row that were, I think, fantastic. You had, you know, like, I think it was like a 21-yarder to O'Shaughnessy that mm-hmm. was a really nice throw by Trevor. Uh, the the touchdown throw to Taven Austin was a very nice throw, and then the two point conversion to James O'Shaughnessy. I mean, you talk about three throws that were, I mean, really good. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that they're elite throws because I wouldn't consider those elite throws, but those are the kind of throws that you need to make on a consistent basis at this level if you're going to have success as a quarterback. And I, I thought that was really encouraging seeing those throws, and I was like, okay, here we go. Okay, you build some confidence, you got some rhythm, you feel good about where you're at. The Atlanta Falcons are not exactly a good football team, so here you here we go, right? Moving. This is going to be – We're moving. This is a comeback. Here we know, go. Comeback opportunity. Here we go. They got in the end zone, went for two to make it a 10-point game and got that. And then the next drive, they had um, – uh, Robinson had a 26-yard reception on that drive. They go 14 plays in about six and a half minutes and – Get a field goal out of it. And that should have been a touchdown. That that goes back to the first and goal at the six where Jawan Taylor has the hold on Grady Jarrett. Mm -hmm. And then the very next play, he gives up a pressure. And so you go first and goal at the six, you back it up to first and goal at the 16. And then all of a sudden, then you get a pressure after that, after that, that forces an incompletion. I mean, that's, that's, you know, putting yourselves behind in the chains. And you just can't do that when you're an offense that's struggling to find some consistency. you got to give yourself the best chance, and penalties don't do that. And then, of course, on the final possession, turnover on downs, could not get it done. They had a couple minutes left and had a chance with the ball in their hand to drive down the field and couldn't get that done down by 7, 21-14 the final. Um, final by, by, by the way, just real quick, yeah. let, me, let me just say this, though, because you know we're talking about you, know, you get the ball back. You got the ball back because the defense eventually – rose up and made some plays. Sure they did. Which I give this team credit because the defense has been able to do that in a couple games here recently. Okay, Maybe hasn't started out great. Okay, the Colts game, uh, just like this game, hasn't started out great. Yep. Okay, you got Jonathan Taylor starting out and rolling downhill against them in Indianapolis, and then you get Cordero Patterson rolling downhill against them here in this game, but the defense fought back. And, uh, and what an amazing performance – by the young Tyson Campbell, and he was a big reason why they got the ball back there at the end of the game with an opportunity at tying it up. Yeah, we will uh, we'll dig into the defensive performance coming up in just a little bit. Uh, it was key, obviously, as you mentioned, though, 21-3, and then they had a three-and-out, six-play drive and a punt against him, and then uh, eight-play drive and a punt. It was forced three straight punts to give the offense an opportunity. Final offensive thought here, though. James Robinson. We touched on it briefly a moment ago. There were some key moments in the game where he was not on the field. And, you know, Urban has said this week, you know, hey, he's still a little bit, but he's not 100%. You know, he's fighting through it. Which is fine. Uh, he did fumble is, in the which, game. Which is fine. Look, look, JP, I know where you're going with this because, you know, if he fumbles in a game, he's not, he's not on the field offensively for about a 16-play stretch ballpark. And, uh, look, it was the first career fumble for James Robinson. If he was not on the field because he was being punished, I don't think that's the reason why. But if that was the case, that would be ridiculous. It was his first career fumble. Mm -hmm. But But I'm all for James Robinson is not healthy, and we need to make sure that we spell him and that we also rotate in Carlos Hyde. I'm all for that. But I think that there's a time and a place for when that rotation happens, and it's got to be it's got to be managed well. And when I say it's got to be managed well, when this team gets to be first and goal at the six, or you're down a score and you're in the in the red zone, you've got to find a way to make sure that James Robinson is on the field. If you're at the twenty and just starting out a drive, okay, at your own twenty and you're just starting out a drive, I can understand that Carlos Hyde is in the ballgame. Yeah. Totally. Sure. Okay, but there are key moments and a key points in a ball game to where you need to have your best running back on the field, and it's not even close, even if he's not 100%. James Robinson is still the best running back on this football team. 
proves it with the numbers uh, week week in and week out. I mean, uh, five point one yards of carry last week. That that catch and that he made, that twenty six yarder, big play, the, man, big play. You know, one handed catch makes a defender miss. He's not a hundred percent, but he still gets up the field and he goes up the sideline. I mean, he's first of all he and I know they don't give out medals in football and everybody <laughs> plays hurt and everybody's tough but James Robinson is tough man he's tough tough as nails and he, he's a he's a scrapper he's a fighter and uh, and I got a lot of appreciation for him because I, I know how hard it is to play hurt and and James Robinson is doing exactly that and he's showing up on game day for his teammates plenty ahead on Jaguars happy hour we will flip it to defense logs when we come back including Tyson Campbell who had a very good game, to say the least. Yes. We'll uh, break that down and maybe some of the reasons behind his improvement as the season has gone along. PRI Productions, the official event production company of the Jags, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com and it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by DreamFinders Homes. Homes that fit your lifestyle. And by Baptist Health, changing healthcare for good. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904 738 0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com at tropical smoothie cafe one taste and you're feeling good now smiling wider now seeing brighter now bucket dunking now namaste and now popping a wheelie now living lighter now you're on tropic time now and on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony, Jaguars today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. I don't want to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate losing. Like, it's just, 
uh, it's just something that we have to change, man. It's something that we're going to change, man. And if not now, it's tomorrow, next week, whenever. But we all got to figure this stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Players and coaches and all, man. And we got to figure it out soon uh, because we can't, we can't keep, we can't keep, we can't keep doing this, man. And, uh, tired of it. We all are. Uh, we got LA this week, short week. Uh, we're gonna go out there Friday, I think. Uh, I don't know the schedule, but that's typically what we do, man. And just to get off our feet, man, get our bodies back right, uh, get healthy. Damn, man, that was a big loss, man. And hopefully he gets healthy soon, man. Just pray for him and his family, and uh, just stay healthy. That's Josh Allen after the game. He was mentioning Dan there. That's Dan Arnold, who's now on injured reserve for the Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber, glad you're along with us. We'll have the Urban Meyer Show coming up at 5 o'clock today. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach. He'll have, uh, we'll, we'll try to get his thoughts on all these college coaching rumors, the carousel of spinning logs. Well, when you're uh, head coach and, uh, what is it, 199-36 uh, record as a collegiate head coach, Urban Meyer was, I believe, with three mm -hmm. national championships, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it would make sense that his name would be bandied about. If uh, an Oklahoma or a USC or a Notre Dame didn't consider trying to contact a guy like Urban Meyer, they're crazy. So, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I get why his name gets thrown out there because he has been one of the best head coaches in college football history. Absolutely. Plain and simple. No, ab yes. Like the third best winning percentage of all time in college and football. And when, when a coach is struggling at the in the NFL ranks, I mean – it's just natural that his name is going to be thrown out there. It's just that part of the deal. So we'll uh, hear from Urban coming up at 5 o'clock on the Urban Meyer Show. To the Jaguars' defense last week, you know, they had done a pretty good job this year of plugging up the run game, but the Falcons, they didn't do a lot well offensively, but that's the one thing they did well was run the football against the Jaguars. Cordero Patterson lined up in the backfield a lot and uh, looked like a natural back there, actually. Well, I think at one point after the uh, – and I wrote this down after the first four, uh, maybe even three Falcons drives, he had eight carries for 84 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah. And uh, it was actually, actually after their fourth drive, I mean, he was uh, impressive. I mean, he's a good football player. And it, it, it took everybody a while to kind of figure out exactly where his fit was going to be in the National Football League because he was obviously drafted as a wide receiver and that didn't work out. And then – Bill Belichick was the one who I think really discovered what his role should be, right? I mean, wasn't it Belichick that said, hey, look, we're gonna, not going to throw to, throw it to a guy that has a hard time catching it. Why don't we just give it to him, you know, or, or make th short little throws to where he can make easier catches and then he can do what he does best, which is make people miss and yak or, or what I call yaw, yards after handoff. That's a new term, by the way. That you're I just make, you're making up, up stats now. I like yeah, it. Yak and yaw. Yaw. Yards after handoff, I, which is I just yards, it. yards per carry. I totally get it. Thank you. That is the same thing. It is. I think. It uh, is, but he's a good player, and the Jaguars did. Look, they weren't very good at the beginning of the ball game, and I know that you know, coaches will sometimes come out and say, you know, well, we did a really good job in the second half. Well, the, 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 the dynamics of the game changed a little bit in the second half because the Falcons felt very content to continue to try to run the ball against a fortified run defense that the Jaguars were now stacking the box because the Falcons didn't feel like the Jaguars could score enough points to threaten. So it's a little different offensive approach by the Falcons in the second half. Hmm. You know, and it, just like it was a little bit of a different approach by Seattle in the second half. And, uh, but I give the, the defense credit. They, they fought back. Even though that's the, the terms of the game, uh, they were able to do that. And I thought a couple guys really stood out performance-wise. I thought Taven Bryan played exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. I thought he played really well. How so? Just he did a really good job of getting off of blocks, being physical, some real good finishing hits on guys. The, uh, uh, the, the penalty that was called on Nevin Loss and Taven Bryan had a great rush. The defensive holding you're talking about? Well, he got a defensive holding call. I think it was against him. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the defense called it on Nelson. On Lawson. Exactly. Yeah, Taven yeah, yeah, Bryan yeah. had a great pass That's rush right. on that. That was he, late in the game. Yeah. He was the reason why that that was going to be incomplete and they right. were going to get off the field. Yeah. But it was negated because of the hold on Lawson, mm -hmm. which was a penalty that shouldn't he shouldn't have 
did what he did. Kind of grabbed him by the hips, right? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> went around the waist yeah. as he's trying to run yeah. away. I mean, it's kind of clear. <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, and then, of course, Tyson Campbell. The, uh, the, the play that he made the interception on, we're actually going to draw this up for Jaguars All Access. Okay. Thursday night, Fox 30, me and Bren Martineau, yes. six, uh, 7 o'clock. Awesome. Ashlyn Sullivan. Don't miss it. Check it out, JP. I do, all the time. We're going to take the interception to the football lab and draw it up. The show football people how lab. Yeah. Yes. And the reason why – I was, like the football lab. The reason why it was a really cool play for a, for a young player to make, cover two has what we call soft spots, and, and a soft spot sits between a safety and a corner. You know, because the safety has to cover, you know, 50% of the deep part of the field. Mm -hmm. And then the corner has to be able to play short, his short route. But he also, you know, because the safety could get stressed and he's covering a big area, sometimes that outside intermediate area is what we call the soft spot. Mm -hmm. And Tyson did a really good job of jamming the wide receiver. And then because he jammed the wide receiver, he can get his eyes back to the quarterback, Matt Ryan. He sees Matt Ryan loading up to throw it to um, the, the talented rookie tight end Pitts, mm -hmm. who is running the little route into that soft spot, and he breaks on it. And first of all, Tyson Campbell is legit fast now. I mean, he's legit fast. Sure he is. And how he breaks on that ball and the, the ground that he covers, tremendous, uh, great interception by him. But he also had a couple other pass defense, and he had two plays on consecutive plays, like a second and ten. He ends up having a pass defense, and then on third down, he makes that play where he's a deep third safety. He covers his guy, it's thrown underneath, and he comes up like a missile and absolutely knifes the legs out of the wide receiver underneath, makes a nice play. So, I mean, he had a, a, a fantastic game. Credit to him. Yeah, and then, you know, earlier in the season, there were moments where – Oh, hey, hey, he loses the ball in the air. There's catches made on him, and it's like, you know, what's going to happen with with him? Can he get can he get better with this? Like, what's the, the situation? And then he got dinged up a little bit, logs. Like, and then now he's come back off the injury. He's playing the ball a little better. I mean, that's improvement as the season goes along. It's great well, to and see. He, and he's not he's not 100. percent I mean, he's got a shoulder. That's right. So, I mean, he's, he's still playing with injury. You know, he had the sure. injury earlier on, which was, what was it, a, an ankle or something of that nature? It, it, was, yeah, it was a lower it was body injury, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but then he fought, fell on his shoulder, and, uh, and then he fights back. You know, he's playing with that. So, uh, I give him credit. He's, he's a tough guy, and, uh, and he's a student. He learns. I, and I, that's what I love about him. I mean, I called him earlier the shadow and I think also what's helped him a little bit is that this defense has transitioned a little bit and that it went from a defense that was trying to play a ton of man to where now they're playing a little bit of a little bit more of zone. And I think that's helped him a little bit too, because he now can keep his eyes back towards the quarterback a little bit. And uh and he's got a great skill set. He's got great closing speed, and like I said, he's legit fast and yeah. that makes all the difference in the world. And just talking to him after the game, we had him on post game on radio on Sunday. Obviously, he has a fantastic mindset for the game. Grew up around the game. Um, played for that fantastic program down at American Heritage under the Sertans. You know, was, there was Sertan the second, who's now in the league also. But yeah, who Patrick by the way, Sertan I think he had the, like two picks this weekend, right? Yes, good day at the, the office. Denver Broncos, for him. young corner. So they were all together. Like that's where he kind of came up and made his bones and. Uh, so he totally understands the mindset of what it takes to power through and play through and there, play is hurt. There, for is his there team. any more of them coming up where we know. can we can get an, another one of those guys? <laughs> you right? might want to go down I-95 and check it out. <laughs> I guarantee you, know? you that Joe Cullen would be in a car in a minute if he <laughs> could go scout a guy right now. I think so. Um, so there you have it. Uh, let's come back. Hey, we're going to look ahead, Logs, to the Los Angeles Rams, the super team. Yeah, we got a chance to see them Sunday afternoon. Uh, or was it Sunday night that they played? Uh, it was the Sunday night game or the Sunday afternoon game. They played the Green Bay Packers, who got to watch them. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you, I would not want to be an offensive guard this week. Oh, uh, boy. Because Aaron Donald oh. looks like that he can go for a chokehold uh, in a matter of seconds. We will uh, delve into all that when we return. Of course, check out the official Jags Podcast Network. It's free on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you download your pods. And this is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. 
Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by TIAA Bank. Turn potential into progress. And by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Want to see the Jaguars take on the Tennessee Titans on the road? Here's your chance. Ravente Cognac and the Jaguars are teaming up to send one lucky fan and a guest from Duval to Nashville for the big game. Enter now at jaguars.com slash Ravente trip for your chance to win round trip flights, lodging, and game tickets courtesy of Ravente Cognac. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 or older to enter. Follow Ravente Cognac on social media at Ravente Cognac and visit ReventeCognac.com today. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field in Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty ZenCog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150, built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Tuesday afternoon. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and the Jaguars Game Day Radio Broadcast are brought to you by Vistar Credit Union. Do good, bank better. Well, the Jaguars will have a game day at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles this coming Sunday. It's a 4.05 Eastern time kickoff. We'll go on the air at 1 o'clock with the Publix tailgate show ahead of that game in Week 13. 4.05 kick. It was flexed uh, and changed. Actually, it was going to be 4.25. They changed the the time and they changed the network. It's on Fox this week again. Uh, all right, so the Rams, after they built this super team, they got in Von Miller and they brought in Odell Beckham. Well, they haven't won a game since then. They're, they've lost three in a row in Los Angeles. Yeah, kind of surprising. And a lot of it has to do with turnovers on offense. Uh, Matthew Stafford, well, he's, uh, you know, looking at their giveaways for the season, 14 of those. But Stafford, over the last three weeks, has five interceptions off of him. Well, that's been a, a big part of it. But, uh, you know, look, Sean McVay's offense, if you look at the one key number that I would focus in on right there is rushing offense. And that's 24th, 95 yards per game. Yeah. And that, I think, is you know, the Sean McVay offenses in the past that have been really good. Think of Todd Gurley, play action, and Jared Goff being really good with that play action, throwing the ball down the field, and they haven't had that. So it's put more pressure on Matt Stafford, and Matt Stafford has been really good now. 
uh, in its entirety. I mean, there's been a lot of pressure on him, but his Green Bay game was, uh, I thought, pretty good. But he doesn't look completely healthy. But, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him. He, he is essentially a lot of pressure on being the offense. He's fourth Absolutely. in rating. He's fourth in yards per attempt. Sure. He's, uh, his completion percentage is 16th, but his attempts are seventh in the league. That means he's throwing the ball a ton. And that's a lot to ask of a quarterback. And, uh, and they had – how many injuries did they have at the running back position before they even got started yeah. with the season? Yeah, they've had some things go on over there on, in the uh, health world. but um, Yeah, the, the running back has been a big yeah. health concern for them that's right. right at the onset of the season. And Odell Beckham Jr. has been a non-factor. He had a touchdown last week. Yeah, but it was – I mean, overall, I mean, he had a touchdown, right? And then he got – he got dinged, ah. and and all of a sudden he's got this back thing going on against Green Bay, and he's got a heat pad on it, and you can see he's trying to wear the heat pad, and then after the heat pad kind of, then he's taking it off to run out and be the third wide receiver on the field. And, look, it, it takes time. As we're seeing here in Jacksonville, it takes time for quarterbacks and wide receivers to develop some chemistry. And just because Odell Beckham has been great in the past, I mean, the reality is he's been great in the past and when's the last time he was great? It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, his last 1,000-yard season was 2019. That's it's a little while ago. Got to get back. And he's coming back from an ACL reconstruction. Mm-hmm. So That's right. It's a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And they lost, uh, what was the wide receiver that they had? Uh, uh, Robert Woods. Robert Woods. Who Great really good wide receiver, yeah. but the main guy is Cooper Cup, who by the way is first in reception, Everything. first in yards, tied for first in touchdowns. Everything, all of the above. Yeah, the, they throw to like fifteen times a game. Like it's it's crazy Why? because he's Why not? Because it's not like good. down the field either. It's kind of no. short and he makes plays and there he goes. Yeah, he's a he's a good football player from the football powerhouse of Eastern Washington. Of course, <laughs> the crazy thing is, is that when he rolled in as a rookie. He was good. I mean, he was good right out of the out of the, out of the gate. So he is a guy that you definitely have to contend with, and he is the main focal point of their passing attack. And uh, hopefully, the Jaguars can find a way to negate some of his some of his great plays that he makes. That would be uh, that ain't easy. Though. Ideal? No, that would be ideal though. It's going to be a tough one though with all those uh, other guys around him. It's now, a weird organization too, JP. <laughs> okay. When I when I say weird, What's that mean they've. They essentially have traded away. Oh, they don't have any draft picks left. I mean, almost. I less, don't say less need the GMs. All, like, I don't need these picks. All, all high draft picks. They yeah. literally they don't put a lot of value on them. And yeah. this team has been the beneficiary of one of the trades with Jalen Ramsey, and things haven't exactly worked out great in that department yet for this team. Hopefully, it will. But uh, right now, I would say that the Rams have gotten the better end of that deal. But then again, they've had to pay Jalen Ramsey a ton of money. Well, think about this, right? So uh, they had to build a brand new stadium, five billion dollars, right? SoFi Stadium, five billion, five billion dollars, okay. right? Um, in L.A., that marketplace. Just hearing people talk about it who have been out there, have covered the league there, and other sports there. You better have some flash and pizzazz about you. That's that kind of town. Oh, yeah. um, you better have some superstar power on your team well, or like you will Lakers. be lost in the shuffle. Yeah, you won't LA. get attendance. Right. So they're trying to do that. And, oh, by the way, I don't think they'd love anything more than to host a Super Bowl at their own place while they're playing in it, like uh, the Bucks did last year. Well, yeah. Well, This is why it's all That's where in. the Super Bowl is going to be at, is yes. SoFi Stadium this coming winter. So have all that together. Get the biggest superstar base you can. Put it all into this year or next, and then, okay, that's where they are right now. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things going on with the L.A. franchise, and, and they all just don't pertain to what's happening on the field. That's right. Because you just had this settlement, <laughs> settlement with that happened St. with Louis. the St. Louis, the city of St. Louis and, and their people because of the relocation of the Rams and Stan Kroenke and, and uh, liability, et cetera. And I think the award was $790 million. And so now the question is, does Stan Kroenke, the Rams owner, does he foot the entire bill? There was a report by the New York Times today that he would. Or would – all the other owners have to share in that. Uh, yeah, I was. I was. No, that's gonna go. JP on Sunday. <laughs> I was just sitting there 
before the game, and you know you watch the warm ups and such, and then on the field you see Arthur Blank and Shad Khan talking, mm-hmm. and I think they sit together on the finance committee, or one, one of the of, committees. Well, yes, yes. And I was going, I bet you they might be talking. <laughs> About this seven hundred and ninety million dollar. It's going to come up in conversation, settlement. I believe. I mean, yeah. I mean, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Priority <laughs> hey, look, number one. Hey, Arthur. Yeah. You know, we're not going to. I mean, we're not going to pay any of this money. This has got to be all on Stan. I mean, Ooh. he was the one that decided to take the team and move it to L.A. So you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one of those that's um, – you know, it sounds like it's starting to wind down, which that, I think is a good thing for the that league. That conversation is out of my ballpark, I can tell Me you Me too. Well, we can talk defense, and this is a defense to talk about. And you start with Aaron Donald up front. They are stout on the defensive line. They've got outside linebackers who can rush the passer. Rush the passer. They take the ball away a little bit. Twelve interceptions for the year. They've got uh, back end safeties are really good. Jalen Ramsey's there. You'll hear him before you see him, and then when you see him, he is a first team All Pro caliber player. Was last season and having a pretty good year again this year. Are they really that good though? No. I mean, I mean, look at the numbers. No, they give up points. I mean, they they're giving up points, which is the most important number twenty first. And with you, when you would have. What many would view as a star-studded cast with Aaron Donald and Von Miller and Jalen Ramsey, you would think top five, right? I mean, top five come to mind? Should be, with all those guys, right? And they're not there. Uh, Could they be there? Maybe. Could they find some chemistry and gel here down the stretch? Maybe. But right now, it's not like they're unbeatable. And here's their kryptonite. I think the the entire for the entire team physicalness. If you go into L.A. and you play good old fashioned smash mouth football, you can beat this team. I mean, seriously. I mean, you can beat this team if you get physical and play smash mouth. It might be the that's San Francisco to a T. That's why they always kind of play them pretty well. The Forty Nine ers. San right? Francisco did it. Yeah. Uh, the Green Bay Packers, a little bit more on the arm of Aaron Rodgers, but they were physical. They were physical. I mean, look, Aaron Donald starts choking people. <laughs> that means He's you mad. Got him. You got him. He's getting mad, yeah, right? that means you're beating him. Yeah. Yeah. So go in there, be physical, shock the world. You did it against the Bills, beat them 9-6. to six. Are you going to be able to hold the Rams to, to nine points? I don't know about that. But, you know, look, you can beat teams when you out-physical teams. And that's got to be the mindset of this football team when they go to L.A. Aaron Donald is a multiple NFL Defensive Player of the Year that's winner. A, that's a whole segment of conversation worth. I mean, it, really. It really is. I mean, the, the guy's won it three times, 17, 18, and 20, six-time first-team All-Pro. I mean, he's I mean, already building a case for Canton, still relatively early in his career. And uh, it starts there. You have to – get a bunch of different guys around him, plan for him all day long, and he can move around. He has the flexibility to do that. Well, he, he's a three technique for the most part, and he can play on either side, and he can also line up and play defensive end, but that's not where his strength is. He is literally – he's like a Tasmanian devil. You know, the, the old – Looney Tunes. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's exactly what he is <laughs> like. And he gets going, and he's just he's unstoppable. He, he's only 6'1"-ish. 280 pounds, but he's, I mean, absolutely sculpted 280 pounds, super strong. He's got speed, quickness, power, everything you can ask. He's a smart player. He he sets things up. He baits players. He is by far the most disruptive defender in the National Football League. Number one, I don't think anybody else is in his category. You know, back in the day you had – a Reggie White and a Bruce Smith, and they have kind of the conversation who was more disruptive. There's no, I don't think there's any conversation that this guy is number one on the list. I mean, even J.J. Watt, when Watt was in his prime, I, well, I would say was close to the Miles right? Garrett would probably be okay. the only one that would be, and then that, that would probably be a good argument. But Miles Garrett and Aaron Donald right now are the two most disruptive defenders in the National Football League. Yeah. And when you watch how teams essentially prepare or what they do to face Aaron Donald. They slide the protection over there, and everybody that maybe have that has an extra second 
or an extra arm, it's always leaning towards Aaron Donald. He's that good. And with Von Miller there, yeah. I, I'm going to tell you honestly what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing the Von Miller of old. Well, he even, has moments. Even that, right? You got him on one side, Leonard Floyd's on the other side at outside linebacker. You don't want to be in third and eight against these guys with no. those two out there, no matter the level where they may or may not be right Well, now. And a lot of people say, well, you can put them on the same side, and boy, they become really a force then. Well, it's actually you want them on opposite sides because then – you're, most teams will say, if we got Aaron Donald on one side and Von Miller on the other, we're going to slide the protection to Aaron Donald, put the center over there to help out. And then you could always maybe have a back chip on Von Miller if need be. But again, like I said, Von Miller is not the Von Miller of old. I mean, he's still a very good player, and at times he, he can be dominant. But he's not Aaron Donald where every play he is dominant. Because that's what Aaron Aaron Donald is right now. And, and this past game, Grady Jarrett gave fits to the Jaguars' defense. Fits. He had uh, he beat uh, Cam Robinson one time on an inside play that was the result of the cause fumble on James Robinson on a little combo block with uh, with Norwell. Norwell had to come off to go to the linebacker. And Grady Jarrett – or what, that wasn't Grady Jarrett. It was one of the other defensive tackles. That was uh, 94. But Grady Jarrett gave, a, gave fits to Barch in the ball game. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the uh, uh, the Hail Mary pass, that was Grady Jarrett. He makes Bart's miss, gets in the backfield, and Trevor is running for his life, can't even throw the ball down the field. So if you're the, the Rams, after what you saw the, the Falcons do with Grady Jarrett on Ben Barch, when you have the opportunity to choose which side Aaron Donald goes, my guess is he will go over to Ben Barch. All right, strap up. So get ready. Ben Barch is going to have a. He's got a great test this week, and then he'll have help. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure he will. Linder will be going his way if, need if Aaron Donald is over there, and that's how that's life of Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. I would love to know how many single blocks Aaron Donald has gotten this year. Oh, I bet. I guarantee it, amen. Uh, yeah, probably on one hand you can count those. Not many. Uh, we'll come back. We'll look at the AFC South standings. Probably know how that's going, though, already. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. Loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between, this truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Coming up at 5 o'clock, the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. We'll ask Urban about his name being rumored to some of these college coaching openings. That's coming up in just a few minutes. And this is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Hey, Jaguars fans, it's always game on with Dunkin's $2 medium hot or iced coffee Tuesdays for rewards members. The NFL season is more than just what happens on game day. That's why Dunkin wants to get you through the game week, too. During football season, the best call is always Dunkin'. Whether it's the morning after a late night game or getting hyped for the week to come, pick up a cup of your favorite coffee and tackle the day with Dunkin'. Join today and order ahead of the Dunkin' app. Jacksonville Jaguars run on Dunkin'. Exclusions apply. Participation may vary. Limit one per week. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing workforce solutions companies in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, 
CSI has the resources necessary to scale with any enterprise, yet they are small enough to maintain the agility, personal service, and remarkable experience they've become known for over the past three decades. This is your workforce and your business reimagined. Visit CSICompanies.com to learn more. Want to see the Jaguars take on the Tennessee Titans on the road? Here's your chance. Ravente Cognac and the Jaguars are teaming up to send one lucky fan and a guest from Duval to Nashville for the big game. Enter now at jaguars.com slash Ravente trip for your chance to win round trip flights, lodging, and game tickets courtesy of Ravente Cognac. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 or older to enter. Follow Ravente Cognac on social media at Ravente Cognac and visit ReventeCognac.com today. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Jacksonville Sports Talk for Jacksonville sports fans. 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Tuesday afternoon. We're a little over eight minutes away from the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network and here on 1010XL. We'll hear from, you guessed it, head coach Urban Meyer. He'll join us, as he always does, and we'll get his thoughts. We'll ask him about those college coaching openings and his name all over Twitter rumors. And do they still have message boards? I bet you they're on there, too. Those, that was a thing, like, in the early 2000s. You're asking me? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe you're the wrong person to ask. Uh, but his name's maybe. been bandied about and thrown around by a lot of folks. We'll uh, see what he has to say about uh, those rumors. But, um, you know, here we are. Two and nine. The Jaguars this week headed to Los Angeles. Veterans... Choose VA for the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. Let's take a look at the Baptist Health Injury Report. Baptist Health changing health care for good. And Jay Tufele is on the injured reserve list designated for return. That was as of last week, so the clock is uh, well underway for him. Dan Arnold placed on injured reserve today, and he joins Jamal Agnew, AJ Can, DJ Chark, and uh, who actually Chark today had a Instagram video in the uh, the treadmill uh, tub that's in the training room in there. So that's a good sign. At yeah, least. well, he was in a, a walking boot yeah. on game day. That's good. So, All I right. mean, that's just moving progress. Around. I moving mean, around. progress of uh, injured reserve with Dan Arnold. That hurts. Yes, it does. Uh, you know, when you look at, at catch percentage, every quarterback needs to have somebody that's reliable, that's an easy target, what we call like a security blanket. And more times than not, that position is either a running back or it's a tight end. And for Trevor Lawrence, Dan Arnold has been the second highest catch percentage target that, that Trevor's had. Yeah. Number one is James Robinson. Running backs are mostly right at the top because it's an easy completion of maybe like a dump off for the quarterback or whatever. But losing Dan Arnold, that's, a, that's one, of your, one of your guys, you know, that high – catch percentage guys that you lose and that makes it more difficult now does it help having James O'Shaughnessy back it helps but James O'Shaughnessy is not Dan Arnold yeah Arnold stepped in and uh, right away and became uh, the 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 guy that he leaned on obviously on offense so he's done which is unfortunate and uh, not done for the year officially but the the Uh, timetable is like you know four to six weeks it depends I mean typically like on a on a mild MCL tear one to two yeah. on a like a medium grade, two to four, and then for you know pretty severe when it can be four to six, you know. So I mean, he has a chance coming back. Yeah, it, it, you know. But then again, you know, towards the end of the season, what's the record? Do you want to fight back and do it? You know, that that all can come into play. Well, as well. I mean, you're fo- you're a football player and you get paid to play. True. You know, so I mean, I don't think uh, a lot of people would say, "Well, does that come into it?" If if there's a risk of a further injury. 
or that he's not 100% healthy, then the answer would be you don't play him. If you're 100%. If you're 100% and you're ready to go, then 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 you go. That's just part of part of the game. Now, if he's, you know, if he's 90% and you're not going to the, or not 85%, you're not going to the playoffs and you say, "Okay, well, you know, we're not going to the playoffs, so should we risk it when he's not 100%?" No. But if he's 100% before the end of the year, then he should play. AFC South standings through Week 12. The entire division lost on Sunday. Uh, so Tennessee now eight and four. Indy six and six cannot gain ground. They blew the game against Tampa. Houston two and nine, and the Jaguars two and nine at the bottom. The uh, the Colts had a chance to gain some ground, but Leonard Fournette got him and scored four total touchdowns in that game for Tampa. I wonder who Bay. had him in fantasy. I don't know, man. I don't know, and it wasn't me. I it was that. me. Oh, great job. <laughs> Way to go. Tennessee, oh, though, pre-game. Uh, that's JP. real nice. J- if JP, that's if good. you had Leonard Fournette, you would be saying, Leonard Fournette, See, Leonard Fournette, Leonard I would, Fournette. Well, I would I would move forward to Sunday when we do that segment again. That's what I would do. No, you yeah. wouldn't. Oh, <laughs> no, so you I'd would keep not. keep my cards you, close to the you vest. You would be bragging about it already with me. I'm not showing off my hand to anybody. No, no, I'm right here close to the vest. <laughs> I don't, I don't brag or gloat or anything like that. Sure, I do JP. That. I certainly don't. JP doesn't brag or gloat or anything. No, none of the, yeah. none of the above. It none. just, it got really deep in here. It did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it did. And not from like a '60s deep perspective either. No, not we're not. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Urban Meyer show's coming up. That's it. Uh, about four minutes from now. Yeah. Looking forward to hearing from the coach. I mean, this is, you know, they've lost three in a row now, and the offense still can't get in the end zone too much. The defense had some early struggles last week, and but then gave them an opportunity late to at least try to claw back in the game too little too late. And now with six games to go and a tough couple of road trips coming up, L.A. this week, Tennessee next, uh, they're up against it here. Well, you got to worry about this game and this game first, and you worry about the last game and trying to correct the, the mistakes that you had in that last game and move forward. I, I don't, you know, look, the reality is there's not going to be a whole lot of different answers. I mean, you just, you keep going to work and you also try to, to improve in every area that you can. And right now there's, there's not, there's not time to institute major change. There's just not, it's just that you're in season and you try to, to grind it out and, and get better and be a little bit more creative and try to catch a, a team a little bit off balance here and there to where maybe you can start to find a little bit of a rhythm offensively. But I do know this. The, the, this season, it, it, at the very beginning, it was about Trevor Lawrence. And it still remains about Trevor Lawrence and Trevor Lawrence getting better. There's so many good things that I see from him, but the reality is, is that you want to start to see the progression and performance here at the end of the season. And this game this weekend will be the first one in December. And we always talk about you want the team to play their best football in December. Okay, well, it's December. Here we go. This team needs to play better. Let's play better. It's a tough task this week. It's a L.A. Rams team that's lost three in a row, and they need to stay in the playoff chase in the NFC. They have this superstar team and this massive stadium and all this pressure and hype and everything that goes with it, and they've lost three in a row. And you know they're going to be up for it. Oh yeah. yeah, they'll be ready. I mean, make no mistake about it. They 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 think that that's that's where I think you got a little bit of an advantage. The the Rams are are angry. They think that they're they probably think that they're going to be able to handle this Jaguars football team no problem. Just like probably how the Bills came down to Jacksonville, thinking, oh yeah, this is a this is a win. Well, it wasn't a win. Jaguars traveling. Oh, they got to come all the way across the country to play us. So, you know, we can handle this football team. Okay. Well, it's time to hit them in the mouth, play a little smash mouth. Carlos Hyde, James Robinson, more of James Robinson, by the way, especially (laughs) at critical moments than Carlos Hyde. Yeah, I should (laughs) have said James Robinson first. I don't want to. I don't want to get changing the depth chart. Yeah, James Robinson first, and then Carlos Hyde, and then more James Robinson. Is it strange that I'm kind of looking forward to what Jalen has to say tomorrow, or is that just crazy of me? I think it's crazy in you. Yeah. If, if if you actually think that whatever Jalen has to say is of any kind of importance, yeah, I think that's pretty crazy. Jalen can be out in space sometimes with some of the things that he says. And sometimes he can be very thoughtful and uh, and reflective and intelligent. And, and sometimes what he says is right on the money. But most times when it comes to this team, eh, 
I'm not going to listen to well, it. Well, let's just hope his back's feeling fine this week. Um, the Urban Meyer Show is coming up. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach. That'll do it for Jaguars Happy Hour on this Tuesday afternoon on the Jaguars Digital Network. Own this thing. It's ours. Come on, let's go. Duval County in 904. Let's own this stadium. Make it ours. Welcome to the Urban Meyer Show. Urban Meyer Show. Meyer Show. Former Jaguar Jeff Lagerman and J.P. Shadrick discuss the latest Jaguars news with the head coach. The Urban Meyer Show starts right now. Welcome into the Urban Meyer Show. The Jaguars and the L.A. Rams coming up in Week 13. We'll recap Week 12 coming up as well. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer. Well, Coach, first off, good afternoon to you. We'll get to last week's game coming up, of course, the Rams uh, next week. Let's start, though, with all the big news around college football. And the head coaching carousel is spinning faster, really, than ever right now. Some high-profile schools have changed coaches in the last 48 hours. And the Urban Meyer name pops up, right or wrong, in, in these times, it feels like. Is that flattering? Is it annoying? Is it distracting? What are your reactions when you see your name on these lists? I spent so long in college football that um, you're talking about some great places. So when I start getting text messages or phone calls, you know, of course it's flattering, you know, the respect I have for – um, that profession, but uh, I have no interest. I, I I have a great relationship with the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I love the 904 area and feel committed to these players. And I mean, this is this losing stuff will kill you. I mean, it will kill you. But uh, we're all committed here to turn this thing. And I speak on behalf of our players, our coaching staff, and we are going to grind and work and work. And you know, the vision of a full bank TIA Bank Stadium and you know, a high-flying offense and all that. Well, we have the quarterback. We have to just keep building and getting better. There's still confidence you can turn it this season with, with six sure. games to go, right? What are we talking about, man? I mean, yeah. you see it all the time. And, you know, I know I see Jeff right there nodding his head. Of course we can. We all beat the Buffalo Bills and play great defense. You know, we, we've we had some awful injuries at, at the fast, you know, our speed at receiver. We And then now our fast tight end's out. And But uh, it's, don't, don't tell us how deep the ocean is because, figure out how to get across it. So we're a, my attitude's great. You know, I just, I feel, I feel for our fans. I feel for our former players. I feel most importantly for our players. Let's go win. Let's go win and keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And uh, we're, that's what you're going to get is a fight. And Urban, the game in the NFL, as you are learning and seeing, is it's, it's so tight. And any kind of mistake that you make or things that you might miss certainly can cost a football team in a big way. Uh, this past game, you had some mental errors that uh, cost your football team. And when you clean them up, obviously will help in a big fashion. How do you go about making sure that you can clean them up to where you can give yourself to the best chance to win every week? That's the million-dollar question. That's a question that, uh, you know, for all of us that's been in this game forever, uh, you, you try to figure out if it was wearing a lucky T-shirt or, or screaming at someone or pulling them out of the game, you do it. But when you think about, uh, first of all, I, I, I say this weekly, and I'd, I'd be transparent with you if I felt like our locker room wasn't, wasn't all about the right stuff. They are. When I see a mistake, it makes you very angry, but it also breaks your heart because, you know, my gosh, you're just going as hard as you can. And you look up, and I remember looking and saying, what? you're kidding me. You know, our defense is off the field twice within a five-minute window, and you see two, two penalties, you know, and uh, – or a, a, a run route or a, a drop pass or something. and, and uh, But, you know, there's one answer, Jeff. You know it as well as anyone. And it's, you know, elbow grease and go to work. Uh, one of the great things I think about, you talk about a great locker room, <clears throat> is you get really exceptional locker rooms when you get to the point where the locker room starts demanding of each other that those corrections are made and those mistakes are not made. Are you starting to see signs of that? Because obviously this is a locker room that takes time to build. Not yet. You know, I see uh, bits and pieces of it because we have some really good leaders. You know, uh, it was great to have Linder back. Uh, 
but but not not to the degree or, or like you said you know that's when I studied the Patriots for so long and I even brought William Guinness in here to talk to our team I remember uh sitting with Mike, Mike Vrabel Bruschi and um uh Rodney Harrison back into the day and I and I even asked coach Belichick about how do you handle this situation he looks at me goes I don't have that situation it never gets to me you know, I was like, "Wow, what are you talking about?" And then I watched practice, and I saw after practice who ran the meetings, the way it was done, and and that's what the culture we're trying to build here. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. Jaguars offense last week. There were some positives later in the game, trying to climb back in the thing, and just fell a little bit short in that one. There was all that talk last week about creativity, and there was some uh, run pass option things that came back in the game last week. The question for me here is. What is your ideal offense, Urban, and and how do you build that? Well, as I told, my entire career has been, what's your offense? Tell me who my quarterback is. You know, what about your uh, defense? Well, tell me who our defensive ends are. You know, I, I was enamored with the 3-4 defense, but we were very fortunate. We kept recruiting these five-star athletes that are 4-3 defensive ends. So guess what defense we played? 4-3. <laughs> you know, when Dwayne Haskins was a quarterback, we dropped back 50 times a game. And he threw 50 touchdowns and very few interceptions. When, you know, JT Barrett or Tebow was your quarterback, you're not going to do that. You're going to run spread option football. So with Trevor Lawrence, you like to see a combination of what, a little bit of what you saw. I thought our offense at times looked unstoppable. You know, if you let him play his game in the gun, but you also, and, and once again, James Robinson is not himself yet, you know, and I love him. We all love him. He goes so, he's such a tough guy, but you can see he just doesn't have that second gear, you know, the first gear that, that he needs. But that to answer your question, a combination of both, and I see teams across the NFL do it. I know he can do it, and um, we just have to keep building. And, and part of that is not easy to kind of come to the conclusion on as far as, okay, we want to be this for Trevor because you got a young quarterback. I think probably you got a vision for him that you eventually he wants to be this. But it takes time, doesn't it, for a young quarterback to develop. And part of that development is aided by a great running game. How do you make that running game even better than it is now with James Robinson not at quite 100%? I think the number one thing is keep the game close. You know, the the games that are really close, we were able to do that. And we ran the ball very effectively uh, Sunday. A uh, combination of uh, Trevor pulling some. And the, the other good thing about Trevor in the run game, you know, I needed to see it. He doesn't put himself in harm's way. You know, he does a good job of getting down. But that that's a part of this offense. It's a part of the Buffalo Bills offense. It's part of uh, other, you know, a lot of teams' offenses uh, to have that guy that's a threat. And he's actually good at it. You know, very few drop-back quarterbacks in the NFL. I shouldn't say that. Very few good drop-back quarterbacks in the NFL because it's – it's. I don't want to say it's impossible, but, you know, we're we're facing, uh, you know, Von Miller. Now the other defensive end's great. Uh, Arnold Arnold is the uh, – Arnold, I'm sorry, uh, is the probably the best in the NFL at his position of three techniques. So standing back in the pocket is not the healthiest thing to do. So and Trevor's really good on the move. Well, Trevor certainly has great mobility in the way that he plays the game. And the thing that has impressed me the most is how mature he seems to be handling all of this, Urban. I mean, this is obviously not what he's used to. He was a tremendous success in high school and college, and so this is new territory. But I think the way that he's handled himself through all of this has been exceptional. A plus. Uh, You know, I just can't get enough of Trevor. I can't, you know, you feel empty when you don't see him. You know, and I, that sounds kind of awkward, but it is. You know, I just love seeing that guy walk in the building. He's always positive. He's, his player's got incredible respect for him, and he has a great vision, as I do, for this organization. And uh, we all wish it would have happened faster, but we still have six games left. Some great things going to happen this year, get some momentum and keep building. And there's time, and there's time for him to get better and time for this offense to get better. How do you go about trying to build that confidence or gain if he doesn't have it? How do you get that confidence going to th- so that he and the offense can have a little rhythm to finish this thing up right? Yeah, they, I, I kind of felt we had some in the second half. We couldn't get the, wait to get the ball back. And, and I think we had two 14-play drives, a uh, nice combination of run and pass. And uh, and then the touchdown pass, I mean, that was as good a pass to Tavon Austin as, as you could have hit. Then the two-point conversion had some energy going, had the ball with the chance to win at the end, and we didn't execute. Uh, so how do you do it? Hard work. I, I hate to be redundant, and I hate to sound like a old coach 
giving you the same answer, but I think we all know the answer. You just go work your you-know-what off. Plenty more ahead with head coach Urban Meyer. We'll flip it around to the Jaguars' defensive performance last week against the Atlanta Falcons when we return. This is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a force that can't be contained, propelled by purpose, pride, and the power to protect. When winning isn't just the mission, it's your passion. You pursue it. You make power plays. You pick your team. At Farah and Farah, we deliver game day energy 24-7. Jacksonville. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150, built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales, Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Vistar Credit Union. And welcome back to the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer, recapping a Week 12 loss to the Atlanta Falcons, 21-14. And uh, let's flip it around to the Jaguars defense against this Falcons team that ran the ball effectively. Cordero Patterson... Lined up in the backfield a good bit, went over 100 yards rushing. Why were they so effective in the run game? Well, they uh, one of the first times they knocked us around. You know, they got displaced at the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's a very talented uh, hybrid player, running back in particular in that game, and big, fast, strong guy, and we had trouble with him. Uh, we held him to 2.6 yards per carry in the second half, stiffened up and put us in position to go win a, a game. So, uh, yeah, early on the game, they just we got knocked around. It's one of the first times up front. Yeah, and Urban, watching uh, Devon Hamilton, he's a guy that uh, coming out of the preseason, I thought that he, he looked ex- exceptional. Uh, this past game, I don't think it was best his best game. How do you get that a little bit stouter in the middle? Because that seemed to be part of the problem against the Falcons. Well, we got a little bit of depth there. You know, Gotsis came in and made a play for us. And, and uh, uh, you got Malcolm. Uh, Hamilton and Taven Bryant. So we got a little bit of, uh, you know, some big guys in there and, and Roy Roberts as well. So the best way is get you four or five good plays and then rotate guys in, you know, because that, that position, that's a, that's a, you know, a thankless position at times. You, you're sitting there taking on 650 pounds of people, men driving you back, and, and you got to stay fresh. You got to have some knockback. The other thing we did is we lost the edge a couple of times. We've been really good about that so far this year is, you know, you hold the edge and you force it back to where all your contain, all your support is on the team. And we lost the edge a couple of times. Yeah, Josh uh, actually even struggled with that as good as he's been playing. But, hey, sometimes that happens. Uh, you didn't have Shaq Griffin in that ball game, And Tyson Campbell turned in what I thought was his best performance. He had the interception there in a cover two defense where a lot of teams tacked, attacked the soft spot, and that's perfectly the way that they had drawn it up, and Tyson played it perfectly. Uh, he had numerous other plays, a couple pass defense to be able to give your team an opportunity there at the end of the ball game. Big tackle on the third down, by far his best game. Yeah, he was uh, – just think about how far he's come. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that we drafted with a, you know, high high pick. He's a guy I've known since his freshman year in high school. 
Uh, it was great to see his family after the game. But he is, uh, you know, he fought through the, the probably the best thing, Jeff, is he fought through an injury. He had an AC that, you know, some guys wouldn't go. He went. And, you know, uh, when he came up and hit that cat on the third down, you know, that, that just showed me a lot about Tyson Campbell. Sure, he made an interception against cover two, baited the quarterback and made a play. Uh, he almost stepped in front of a pick six, too. So there's there's a lot of positives right now with Tyson. Yeah, early in the season, uh, Coach, uh, there was all that talk about him not being able to find the ball. And, you know, there were a couple of plays where things got behind him. What did he do to work on that? Well, he works, you know, and, and Tim Walton, I really like Tim Walton. You know, I, I, you know, one of the things my job is to challenge people. Are we doing enough drills? I call them snapshots. Are we putting these positions and these players in position to what actually happens in a game? I'm tired of, you know, enough of the old drills. I, 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 I can't stand that sometimes. But are we, let's break down a drill, create a new one where he has to go make a play on the ball and, you know, lean the receiver out of bounds and all the things that great corners you see doing. So I really appreciate what they've done. I think one of the things that I've noticed, and, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, but before Tyson would try to turn and look back at the ball, once the receiver gave him an indication that the ball's coming, whereas now his attention stays on the wide receiver in the hands of the wide receiver and tries to battle it at that point. Am I, am I wrong? No, you're right. Uh, well, the, the, you know, there's a, obviously, you're talking about man coverage here. Man coverage, you, you can't lose sight of the wide out. And the great ones, because you have to all, you know, it's almost talking out of both sides of your mouth. And keep, you know, go intercept the ball, but don't take your eyes off the wideout. The great ones have a, a sixth sense where that receiver's at. So he's watching them, but when the eyes go back, he knows, he feels where that wideout is, and he leans into him, makes a play. That's where you see so much improvement from Tyson. Shaq Griffin did not play this past week in the concussion protocol. What's the status of him for this week? Anything new to report there? Uh, it's day to day. We'll know more, uh, you know, as the, as the week progresses. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. You touched on this earlier, uh, Urban. You know, there were some yards given up early in the game. It was 21 points, you know, after the first drive of the second half. But then the Jags defense got off the field each time, even though there was some early adversity again. And that tells you a lot about this battling group on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, we got a battling coordinator. You know, we got a tough guy coordinator, and, and the standard is very high. And we didn't play up to our standard. Uh, very tough meeting we had yesterday, but we're going to go out and practice. And, you know, we're going to play great defense here. We're going to keep building our defense with personnel, and we're going to – I'm committed to this scheme. I believe it's the right scheme. And uh, I, I, I simply like the way our defense is being coached right now. Urban will come back in just a moment, and we'll look ahead to the Los Angeles Rams in Week 13. It's the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey. Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Want to see the Jaguars take on the Tennessee Titans on the road? Here's your chance. Ravente Cognac and the Jaguars are teaming up to send one lucky fan and a guest from Duval to Nashville for the big game. Enter now at jaguars.com slash trip for your chance to win round trip flights, lodging, and game tickets courtesy of Ravente Cognac. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 or older to enter. Follow Ravente Cognac on social media at Ravente Cognac and visit ReventeCognac.com today. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field in Valley Park it for free? That's right. 
Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer on the Urban Meyer Show as the Jaguars head to Los Angeles SoFi Stadium to face the Los Angeles Rams. Leaving early for the trip again. Did that earlier this year. Headed out Friday to Seattle. Heading out Friday again to California. Now take us through that decision again. Why, why the early trip? A lot of those decisions I leave up to the players and what's been done in the past. You know, the only experience I had was at Notre Dame. We went out to USC and we'd go out a day early because of the time change. And so I, I visit with players what's been done in the past and coaches that have done it before. Trent was very helpful to us. That's why we're doing it. The tri- trip to, to L.A. is certainly always different. I remember one of my first trips to L.A. It's uh, certainly eye-opening a little bit. And it's going to be eye-opening in more ways than one for your football team and that it's an incredible new stadium, SoFi Stadium, home for the Rams and also the Chargers. Do you gonna are you gonna be able to see it or to walk through it maybe the day before the game? Are you gonna practice there? How do you do that? We're gonna practice at uh, it might be UCLA. I'm understanding. Uh, we're still finalizing all that. I know we'll go through. Uh, 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 you know the, the what's the old Hoosiers when the guy got on the guy's shoulders and he measured his ten feet. That was the a great scene. Ten feet. Yeah, great scene. Free throw lines this. And so I might bring the tape measure out and show those guys. It's a beautiful stadium, but, you know, these guys are pros here. And, you know, I've been around some great stadiums, and I understand it's phenomenal. But that's not our concern. Our concern is the all-star team we're playing. Yeah, let's get to those Los Angeles Rams. Um, they've lost three straight. They uh, need it, obviously, to stay in the NFC playoff race of course the Jaguars need this game also the three game losing skid here this Rams offense though Matthew Stafford brought over from Detroit uh, the last few weeks has turned the ball over a little bit they've got the top receiver in the NFL and Cooper Cup and when they're on they can be a very dangerous offense yeah and they uh, just got the other guy uh, out of the uh, Odell, Odell, Beckham. Odell Beckham yeah, yeah. so just uh, happened to get him and then you got Jefferson, who I actually recruited, committed me out of high school. He's a very uh, athletic player, too. Uh, Zach Higby, the wide tight end, is a very good player. Yeah, but it all is driven by that quarterback. You know, our uh, Daryl Bevel coached him at Detroit. I've coached against him when he was at Georgia. I know him. I, I, you know, when I was trying to hire a coordinator, I talked to him a couple of times. That's how much respect I have for Matthew Stafford. And uh, when he's on, he's, he's Aaron Rodgers-type player. When he's not, you know, he's like a lot of quarterbacks when they struggle. So I don't know if he's banged up a little bit, uh, but they got excellent skill. The three wideouts are all excellent players. The offense line, their left tackle is 40 years old. Uh, Whitworth, I think his name is. Yeah, Andrew he, Whitworth. Yeah, he's been around, and he's a giant man. But, uh, the, you know, uh, that coach and that staff, they put together a very good team. Yeah, you, you talk about Whitworth. It reminds me of one of the guys that I got to sit next to in our NFL Players Association Union meetings, which was Jackie Slater. Not many guys have been able to play the wow. game at offensive tackle for nearly 20 years, and Whitworth is one of those guys, just a freak of nature. Well, Jeff, you're only 41. Let's go. <laughs> well, you still got some – those knees are fine. Let's go uh, play. <laughs> I don't think so, but it's amazing to me that a guy can play that long. You know, the Clay Matthews of the world, the Whitworths, the Jackie Slaters, I mean, guys that have – longevity that take care of their body in such a great way and are not able to do it at a high level. I mean, I've always had the most all the respect in the world for those guys because of the way that they handle themselves and the way that they've always taken care of themselves. Well, it's the only way you can survive. You know, the greatest testimony is that quarterback in Tampa. You know, what are we, you know, what are you talking about? But I was really amazed by that because a lot of times you'll see maybe a quarterback or a certain position, but an offensive lineman, and he's still really good. Um, he's a giant human being, and he's, he's you know he very rarely gets in a three-point stance, if ever. And he's just a giant. You know, he very you get hard to get around him in pass pro, and he just kind of wallows off the ball with the you know him and the, he just does a great job. 
Uh, big, a big, big man. Who's older, by the way? Is, is it Sean McVay or Andrew Whitworth? I, just, <laughs> I think just, it's Whitworth. <laughs> well, one, yeah. of, one of the things I think <laughs> about the Rams offense that, uh, that they've always been built on with Sean McVay, even though they have this star-studded cast of wide receivers, even though one of them's on injured reserve, has been the foundation of the running game, and Sean McVay has always loved play action. Are they still that, or have they morphed a little bit with the the star-studded cast at wide receiver, I, I, they're they're a passing team right now. You know, they're they're a team that I don't have the analytics in front of me or the, the numbers for you, but just watching them, you know, they're a passing team. They're going to get the ball in the hands of the wideouts. They're going to utilize the strength, and that's a quarterback throwing the ball. By the way, uh, yeah, Sean McVay's thirty-five years of age. Andrew Whitworth turns forty it's on December December twelfth. <laughs> Uh, Rams defense. I wonder if he gets bed checked, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you think they, Andrew Whitworth gets bed checked by Sean McVay? I don't think I don't so. Maybe not. Um, Rams defense, Coach. Aaron Donald, obviously a multiple NFL Defensive Player of the Year, first team all pro over and over again. Where do you start with Aaron Donald? Uh, Donald? He might be the best three technique I've ever seen, you know, and I've seen some great ones. And his quickness, his tenacity, his strength. Uh, you know, Bevel's coached against him, so is Schottenheimer, so they know him very well. This will be my first time I've heard about him. Uh, incredible respect for him. Uh, but he is you, – you, you have to count for him every snap. And that's as simple. You either slide to him, you get four hands on him. I mean, it's he's that good of a player. And when I say he's arguably the best three technique that I've seen, that's a lot of that's a lot of football I've watched for 35 years. Yeah, he's, he's six foot one and 280 pounds, and just looking Strong. at the number standpoint, you wouldn't think that somebody could be so exceptional, and he is. And I remember Urban watching his college tape, going, "Man, this guy's kind of like a little Tasmanian devil. He just never quits." And just a, a little tidbit: when I watched his film, the only guy that I ever saw have great success against him. In college, was your center Brandon Linder? Really, he was outstanding against Aaron Donald in college. Well, we got the center back, and it's good to have him back. <laughs> it certainly is. But they're not only just him. I mean, they've got now Von Miller, who is yeah, probably a first ballot Hall of Famer on one side, and then Leonard Little on the other side. I mean, so this is going to be a obviously a, t- a tough ask for your offensive line, and and running the football would certainly help that. It would, and uh, you know, some teams run the ball on them a little bit too. But both defensive ends, you have, you know, it just cracks me up when you say, "Let's go get Od- Od- Odell Beckham Jr." And let's oh, by the way, I just I remember never forget. Trevor looked at me, and goes, "Oh, we get to see Von Miller again," and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And he's out the at the Rams, so uh, very good. But you know what? Uh, our line when they play their best are very good. Uh, you just go back to where we're facing those guys. You know, the Cardinals defense, who I think is one of the best defenses in the NFL, and we ran eight straight times at them and scored a touchdown. We kept uh, Chandler Jones off our quarterback. You know, Von Miller had one sack, but for the most part, we hung in there. So, um, I, 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 let, let's go. Let's go play and let our guys get ready. To, let's get these guys ready and let them go play. You know, when I've when I've watched a lot of football, when I said Leonard Little, <laughs> when I'm going back to an old LA Ram, or should I say, St. Louis Ram. I mean. Yeah. Wow, that's a, a bit of my, my question is when you do a survey of the radio show, how many people remember him? I certainly do. Probably, yeah. I mean, he yeah, he was yeah. a good one now. Good I mean, he was a really good sure. football player. But yeah, sure. little 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 back from the back crevices of your mind, something <laughs> pops out. Hey, uh, one guy you might hear before you see is Jalen Ramsey. But when you see him, what do you see in a cornerback out there? I see a guy that I wish was here. You know, I wish I'd. Got my hands on him because I think uh, I remember him coming out of Florida. Obviously, my background in Florida, I knew all about him. Uh, one of the best in the game, if not the best of the game. Uh, they move him all. They play him inside at nickel quite a bit. They uh, no, they're not really a true man. They're a match team. Uh, but he's just he's a guy that just a little bit like Von Miller. He's the best at his job. Uh, the three technique is the best at his job, and now the corner is the best at their job. So they've done a nice job building this thing. All right, Urban, final thought with you heading into week 13, uh, keeping the players and the coaches focused and, and going forward each week down the stretch here. And it's really, for you personally, the first time you've really had to kind of deal with this type of adversity and wins and losses. How's it holding up? How do you motivate these guys each week moving ahead? Well, I made a comment. I could lie to you and say, you know, that I'm not a good liar about that. I, uh, losing kills you. It kills you. It, it takes party away every time you lose. I really believe that. Uh, and that's why you work so hard to do what? Not to lose. 
and I speak on behalf of our staff and players. I mean, we we got to go win, and and we're in a street fight every week. At times, uh, we're right there. You know, twice we've walked away with a win, and we got to have more of those. How do you do that? Just clean things up, and people got to make plays. You know, at the end of the day, you got to go up like Tavon Austin, put us in position to help us go win a game, and uh, that's what the, that's not that's everything I'm telling you is not a secret. Uh, it's how you go win in athletics, particularly the game of football. Urban, great stuff. Enjoy the conversation tonight. We'll uh, talk to you again next week. Thank you. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. Back with more on the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Enjoy fall savings going on right now at Renewal by Anderson. Save 20% on replacement windows, patio doors, and installation. Plus, no money down, no payments, and no interest for 18 months. Designed to withstand the harshest weather environments. Find out more at rbafla.com. This offer expires November 30th and restrictions apply. Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. License number CGC 1527613. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission, we're nonprofit. So we pass the savings along to our members because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. And welcome back. It's the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Flogman, our thanks to Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer, who joins us in the first half hour every week here on the Jaguars radio network. Those names all over the place this week, but, um, you know, he's flattered, he said, about all the Name recognition going with these openings in college football, but he is committed to the Jaguars, committed to Jags owner Shad Khan and the organization, and wants to get this thing right. So well, uh, glad he glad he addressed it. Actually, well, today. I mean, that's look, he he had to because I mean, he has been so wildly successful as a college coach, and it's natural that his name is going to get thrown around. and And uh, and the reality is, until you start winning here that probably will always come up when there's an opening in college. It's just, it's just natural, and it's not uh, anybody trying to do anything in a, in a, in a negative fashion. That's just, it's just part of the business. It is. It is. And uh, so maybe it's been uh, swept away for the time being. At I least. know one thing, J.P. On. Yeah. Ur- Urban's probably sitting there, and I was going to ask him this, but I was like, ah, I don't want to go ahead and do that. But he's probably sitting there going, wait a minute. Ten million? Ten million to go to LSU. Lincoln Riley got more than that well, to go to SC. Yeah. And got a six million dollar home. Mm-hmm. Use of a private jet. It's my guess that he's doing just fine here. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure he, I'm you sure know. he is, but but yeah. still. You're probably sitting there going, Oh, wait a minute. What the no, what? Yeah, wait, they, they didn't pay like that in Gainesville wait when I was down I got, there. I got three natties, man. I got three <laughs> right. national championships. You're right. Yeah, but it's I, the times have changed. It, it just goes to show you that college football is, at the end of the day, it's, it's business. And so for all of the, the purists out there that have said, 
that players shouldn't be paid. I mean, doesn't this kind of speak to that and say maybe the players should get a little something and, and that now that things now are different and yeah. they can, it's not such a bad thing, right? That's right. And the transfer portal is open for business, and those guys are moving all over the place well, and it's, now. It's, it's, it's just a different, it, and yeah, and it's good. It should. I, I think it's that a that's thing. a. I think that's a totally fair thing, especially especially with in light of what some of the things that are happening now. I mean, players should have the ability to have some some freedom of movement and to be able to because I mean the reality is is that this is a career for some of them, a career to be able to advance to the next level to monetize their talents. And so why shouldn't they have the ability, if they're not playing and, and have the ability to be a good player, to move from one place to another? I think it's fair. It's just like in the NFL, I've, I was always an advocate for free agency. And I remember having conversations with Bruce Coslett back in the 1990-91 years. And we, we were talking at that point about free agency. And he was like, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. And Bruce was a player that became a coach, longtime coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, head coach of the Jets when I was there. Mm -hmm. And I said, Bruce, I said, free agency is going to do an amazing thing for the game. I said, it's going to give people hope. And I said, and on top of that, it's going to make it a year-round conversation. And he's like, ah, get out of here. You know, he's kind of old school. Yeah. And, uh, and sure enough, free agency came about. But it was, but that's a good thing. I mean, free agency is good. The portal's good for college. And uh, I need to get into coaching. <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah, I need to brush up on my X's and O's, it sounds like. Uh, we'll come back in a moment. Let Please. me ask you a question yeah, real quick here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does Lincoln Riley get the, like, with the jet, right? That This use of the jet from Apparently SC. Apparently there's use of a jet. Yes. Let's say I want to go get a steak dinner at uh, in, in Indianapolis. St. Elmo's yeah. in Indy. Yeah, shrimp cocktail. And, I, and I'm the head coach of the uh, NC Cal. Trojan. Yeah. Can I hop in the plane, fly to Indy, and grab a shrimp, shrimp cocktail there? And there's, hey, you know what? Keep it running. I'll be back in about an hour. Yeah, and just eat the shrimp cocktail. Yeah. yeah. And then say, I want to go to Peter Luger's in New York to get the main course. So, so mm. can, I, can I hop from Indianapolis for the appetizer? And then have a drink on the plane to go to New York to get a steak at Peter Luger's. I mean, I'm, and then maybe fly to Boston to get a, a pie. Who is in the position to say <laughs> no to that right now? I don't know of many people. I would, I would imagine he's got some guidelines, but it's just maybe it's fun so. thinking of that anyway because you know, and and why I always think of it in terms of food, I have no idea. <laughs> Well, you are. I'm a foodie. You are. Uh, let's come back. We'll uh, get a little more into this Jaguars offense. He had some interesting comments tonight about uh, what his offense should be, and that changes with the personnel, obviously. We'll break it that down when we come back. It's the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet. Who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pets for it a match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic. Equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. 
scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show rolling along. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer, joining us in the first half hour every Tuesday afternoon here on the network. Thank you for joining us today. We're getting ready for the Jags and the Rams coming up. You know, we asked him, what is your ideal offense? What does it look like? What, are you, you know, what's the, what is that? What is that uh, answer? And well, he said, who's the quarterback? Who's the who's the person well, around I him? I think it's a great answer because literally I think every offense should be different based on the talent that you do or do not have. I mean, in a perfect world, you'd like to build towards well, maybe this ideal that you have, but the reality is you don't always have that. For example, you can't be a, 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 a drop-back passing game if you're Lamar Jackson. That's not what he does best. You can't expect Tom Brady to operate in a Lamar Jackson offense or vice versa. So it, it has to be based upon personnel, much like he talked about defensively in college. He say, hey, look, we've got these fast defensive ends. And much like coming here to where you've got Caleb on Chazon, Smoot, and Josh Allen, which are three, four outside linebackers slash hybrid ends that can do both. Okay, well – do they do best? Well, they can do everything. So let's be a multiple defense. So I think that's that's the best approach to have as a coach, and it's a smart it's a smart way to approach business. And I think going forward, you'd like to maybe find pieces that fit what your vision is going to be. But until you get all those pieces to maybe fit where you'd ultimately like to be, you have to be what they are, which whatever their talents are, utilize their talents. For example, Lavisca Chenault's not a down the field go route type of guy. Okay, he's kind of a hybrid tight end running back slash receiver in the middle of the field. When he's got the ball in his hands, he's great. He can now he can run well, over people and get he a has to, and he's got to do a better job with the mental aspect of the game. I mean, that fourth and ten where clearly him and the quarterback weren't on the same page, that's not okay. Earlier in the game, it looked like he had a little bit of a miscommunication as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've worked with a quarterback, and Lavisca has worked with a quarterback longer probably than anybody because he didn't miss any time in preseason, was there for training camp and everything else. Those things have to be on point, and they weren't on Sunday. So, uh, the other receivers, uh, Laquan Treadwell had four catches, 53 yards. I still like him, JP. I still like okay. him. I uh, do. And right. uh, Tavon Austin had a touchdown catch. Just real quick on, on Treadwell. The reason yeah. I like him is that you need to be, to get your rhythm back, you need to be more successful running the ball to take some pressure off the quarterback. And Laquan Treadwell has done an excellent job. He's by far the best blocking wide receiver on this team right now. And he's a contributor on special teams. I'm not talking about a guy that's just lining up and playing special teams and, you know, and, and punching a clock. I mean, he's, he's good. And this is a former first-round pick that probably got an incredibly big dose of reality to realize that if I'm going to stay in the game, I've got to be able to do some of these other things. And I give him credit because that's not an easy transition to make to go from being an expected top-end wide receiver to being a wide receiver that's, that's going to block and going to play on special teams and maybe get some catches here every now and again. I give credit to him as a person for being able to, uh, uh, to adapt to that role because that's not exactly, I'm sure, what he envisioned when he was drafted. I mentioned Taylon Austin had his first touchdown in a couple years in the NFL. Another catch in the game, 21 total yards against uh, the Falcons. And then uh, Marvin Jones Jr., who has a lengthy streak now of consecutive games with at least one reception, 108 straight games now. That is correct. And, and so then he made some really nice catches yeah, in the game. Four of them in the game. They weren't easy. There, there was a couple of them. 
to where he had to kind of get the outstretched arms, had one of them where uh, he dove kind of for the ball a little bit and then rolled for the first down, great body control. And Taven Austin, when he caught that ball in the middle and then made a quick move to get up the field, I was sitting there thinking to myself, where has he been and where has that been for like the last five weeks? I mean, can we not get him the ball yeah, right. in a short area and let his quickness kind of do something after the catch? Yeah, that was uh, – I mean, it was good to see. Boy, you'd like to see more of that, and you'd like to have seen more of that already because it's he's been with this team for a while now uh, this year. Yes, he has. Uh, we'll return in a moment. Jaguars defense with their hands full this week against the L.A. Rams, Matt Stafford, the receivers, and an offense that – can put some points on the board in L.A. And this is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com. The world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. Great teams. Leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> Great job, honey! Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> it's been around longer than your quarterback. When you put it on, everyone knows it's game time. So legendary, it deserves its own Hall of Fame. Members only jackets, undeniable quality and style for over 45 years. Scratch and claw your way over to membersonly.com. Get ready for football season with a jacket that can only be summed up in one word, iconic. Use discount code Jaguars at checkout for 35% off on all iconic racer jackets. Members only, when you put it on, something happens. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer with us in the first half hour every week here on the network. The Jags and the Los Angeles Rams coming up. Well, they're going to face a Rams offense that has Matthew Stafford back there. He's been at it in the league for a long time, playing at a high level. But now they went and got him from Detroit in the offseason to really kind of cap off this offense. They've got Cooper Cup. They uh, had Robert Woods. He's hurt. They brought in Odell Beckham Jr. It's only going to be his third game. That's st- he- that kind of stinks that Robert Woods got hurt. I mean, because that was going to be, you know, the 
they would have the ability to essentially to run three, a lot of three and four wide receiver sets no, with legitimate no doubt. guys. And, and, I mean, it's good for the Jaguars that, that they lost him. But I wanted to see all of that. I wanted to see the Rams with all of their weapons to see what they could do with that this year. To the league, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, I mean, it's sure, sure. look, I mean, you, never, you always want teams to be able to play at full strength and guys not to get hurt. You know, for example, the injury to Jack Conklin – on Monday night, the offensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns. I mean, just a turn you go, you feel heartbroken for the guy. Uh, Robert Woods kind of the same way. But, but Jack Conklin, especially just because he's he's battled a lot of injuries over the last couple of years. He had the ACL, mm-hmm. and then he was hurt when he came back from that. In my opinion, they rushed him back way too early in Tennessee, and then he got the, the – I think he had a shoulder after that, and then he tore his patellar Monday night. Against, I think, was that the Buff? It was the Baltimore the Ravens game, Cleveland yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you you always want everybody to be at full strength and for everybody to have their their, their full arsenal of, of weapons. And Robert Woods toured in practice of all things. Uh, you know, yeah, his ACL, is, right? Yeah, yeah, that's just a bummer. And it was right after they had acquired Odell Beckham days before. It's just like, are you kidding me? Of all things. So the uh, Jaguars' defense this past week. Gave up a bunch of rushing yards. A lot of those were early and earlier in the game, as Urban referenced uh, earlier in the show tonight. But they still gave up a bunch of rushing yards in the game. Cordero Patterson, Cordero Patterson was the the main target there, of course, last week. Um, you know they've done a pretty good job this Jaguars defense most of the year against the run, though. And you know the Rams aren't going to run it down your throat all the time. You know they don't have the kind of firepower weapons in the backfield that you know some of these other teams that the Jaguars have seen do have. So that may not be as much of a concern this week. Right? Well, I'm, I'm, my hope lies, JP, when you, you go back to the game, what, four games ago or whenever it was when Buffalo was coming down here, and nobody gave the Jaguars a chance. Nobody. Nobody. I mean. I mean, nobody. Nobody. Outside this building. <laughs> You know uh, what happened? They they won the game. They they well they held Buffalo to a season low in points and yards and yeah. quarterback rating on their way to a victory, and it kind of showed that people have the old saying that on a given on any given Sunday it's it's there for a reason. So can the Jaguars go out west and beat the Rams? Sure they can. It's going to require one great effort as a football team, but I think the the Game plan has already been shown to them. All you have to do is look at the last three weeks. Teams are being more physical than them, especially the 49ers game. And you, when you look at different game plans or bl- blueprints to how teams have had success against an opponent, you got to look at it and say, can we do that? Like You can't go out there and do what Green Bay did. You don't, you don't have Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you have Trevor Lawrence, but he's not Aaron Rodgers yet. I mean, you hope he becomes something like an Aaron Rodgers. So can you do what the 49ers did? Yeah, maybe. Run the football and run it effectively and limit the number of throws, put uh, together long drives. Can you do that? You got a chance because you've run the ball pretty well. James Robinson last week, even though we know that he's not – a hundred percent, his numbers drastically improved last week. He was about two yards per carry off his off of his earlier season pace in the two games when he came back from an injury. This past game, he was nearly back to the pre-injury level at yards per carry. But we know he's not a hundred percent. But at least it was better. So that gives you hope that okay, look, you can be physical against the Rams and keep Matt Stafford and that offense off the field. Hopefully. That would be nice. Uh, We'll take one last time out, and we'll come back with some final thoughts ahead of week 13. We're headed to December. It's here, Logs. Mm -hmm. Time to play your best football, and and you want the arrow going up. We'll continue to discuss that when we return. This is the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? 
Move Over Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field in Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty ZenCog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, Alert Today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our scrubbing soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Want to see the Jaguars take on the Tennessee Titans on the road? Here's your chance. Ravente Cognac and the Jaguars are teaming up to send one lucky fan and a guest from Duval to Nashville for the big game. Enter now at jaguars.com slash trip for your chance to win round-trip flights, lodging, and game tickets courtesy of Ravente Cognac. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 or older to enter. Follow Ravente Cognac on social media at Ravente Cognac and visit ReventeCognac.com today. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back to the Urban Meyer Show. Rolling along, J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer in the first half hour every week. Joe Fortunato on the audio, Brent Reber on the video on Jaguars.com. And the Jaguars get the Los Angeles Rams in week 13 at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. $5 billion complex just <laughs> south of uh, well, downtown you gotta, L.A. you got to remember one thing. Yes. That's California prices. It, it is. Uh, but apparently it's uh, it's spectacular from all the things you see on television and all the reviews of it. So the uh, and Jags been there before. They went last year. Uh, we, you know, broadcast crew didn't go last no, year. No, we yeah we didn't travel last but, year. But uh, guys that were on the team have seen it before. And now, uh, you know, this is a team that the Rams need it. They've lost three. They feel like this is their year. They're all in with all these superstars and everything. They're losing football games all of a sudden. Jaguars need it for a different reason, just to get some positivity and and play a complete game. They, they really haven't done that even in their wins this year. Um, no. A full three-phase complete game where they go out and, and play well on all sides all game long. Well, I, 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 I want to see – I've said this before, but I think it's still the most important thing, and it, and it probably can't be spoken enough, and that this season is about Trevor Lawrence and and getting – your young quarterback experience and getting him better and seeing him improve. And so that's what the remainder of the season needs to be. And, and I know the last two weeks, Urban had talked about how he felt like, you know, this past week the offense got a little better. He thought that a couple of weeks ago Trevor had a good game. And uh, the reality is, is that you've, you've got to start scoring more than 14 points in a ball game or 10 points in a ball game, I think, for – 
for most people to look at it and go, yeah, yeah, I see that. Mm-hmm. And and also from the standpoint of Trevor, is Trevor feeling? And Trevor's not feeling great about scoring, you know, twenty four points in the last two ball games, or how many points has it been in the last right. five games? Not enough. Fifty forty three plus whatever was fifty seven. Yeah, yeah, fifty seven points in the last five games. I mean, that's just not enough when the season average is twenty three a game. So you have to, or the NFL average per game is twenty three points a game. So they've got some work to do, and they've. They definitely have some time to work on it, and so you can't waste the time that you do have. Network coverage begins Sunday at 3 o'clock ahead of the 4.05 kickoff. We'll have countdown to kickoff. Of course, the final word with head coach Urban Meyer before kick, about 15 minutes before they put total leather at SoFi Stadium. You know who I'm looking forward to seeing? Who? Mojo. Yeah, he's on the radio crew for the Rams. Mojo is the the, uh, color analyst on the radio broadcast of the Los Angeles Rams and so I'll get to see Mojo and it's always good to see him. It'll be good. Great Got watching him on the NFL Network too. I'm a big fan of his. Thanks to our entire crew and our thanks to head coach Urban Meyer for Jeff Lagerman. I'm J.P. Shadrick. We will catch you next time. It's the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. <laughs>